Hi there, a little design interlude. So I'm often sketching on post-it pads as much as my sketchbook. These end up, end up in my sketchbook. But <clears throat> what I want to show you is where I'm thinking through design details, okay? So whenever one thing meets another thing in whatever plane or whatever angle, there's always a way to think about how to do that detail, how to finish it. Yeah, and there's quarter mound, quarter round trim that can solve a lot of detail problems. But sometimes it's quite an exposed thing and you need to really think through it. So for me, thinking through how the dinette frame and its top and its front and how my table will sit down in that to become my bed platform is a whole thing I've been thinking through for quite a long So here what we have is the dinette frame the dinette frame on top is a half inch piece of plywood that will go to that edge now this detail here is what we're talking about and what we have here is I've got to work out how to I want my table to have angle angled edges I think it looks more attractive for a table edge it's also actually a pretty clever way to seat the the table down because it can't be knocked out if it's square it can kind of be knocked out of position but if it's at an angle it's going to really seat in position so <clears throat> I therefore if I have a 45 degree edge on my table which I'm not showing here I just know it's there this would be the table I need a 45 degree edge here okay so I'm going to put that as a fascia on the front of this now <clears throat> you might be looking at it and go why don't you just put that three quarter inch piece right up against here well because it's a sharp point and that runs the risk of getting chipped of being sharp when you're lifting up a lid and putting down a lid so the best way to do it is this half inch fascia which also is where I can put my um, vents into and then I'm going to do a two and a half inch little fascia here that I will I will screw into here screw and glue into here and that will provide the platform for the tabletop so this is just to hope this makes sense I'm going to show you when I'm building it um, <clears throat> But this is the kind of thing I really, really suggest that you sketch and think about before you build it. So for example, what that means is this fascia, this vertical fascia is going to have to sit up half an inch off this edge. So as I'm installing that now, I need to make sure that's installed upwards because I haven't actually cut this piece yet. Okay. So this is design, this is functional design at this point. This is how to make your design functional and beautiful so that when you actually see this finish, you're gonna see this nice simple top edge all the way around and it's gonna match the shaker doors and drawers that I've got all over the place too. So I'm also thinking of that. How does this detail work with the other details in my design? Okay, I hope that's helpful and I'll show you as I go. Bye for now. middle filed and then just the inner part filed, yeah, with the square sponge. Good. And the dinette and storage taking shape. And that's just going to have doors on the front and top on it now. That's it. Vents on each side, vents to make sure heat gets 
into the back in the cold of winter. And I've just screwed in the last of the base part of the dinette cabinets using these fabulous little Torx screws. I love these things to bits. This kind of head. And that's going to have the flap that comes out, the vents, make sure air is flowing into the back. Swing that. So I'm going to finish all the tops on the dinette today. And so <clears throat> before I do any big cuts like this, I sketch it all up, right? So that's what this is. This is my rough hand sketch, which has got all the dimensions of what I'm cutting. Um, and each side is not exactly the same because of the propane locker that needs to be sealed. So effectively we've got the widths, the width and the length, and then various cuts for the pivot up flaps. And um, so that's what I start with. And then I know what my beginning cuts are, and then I'm going to slowly start to cut down these various sections. And then I'll edge strip them, and then uh, route out the little groove for the piano hinge, and then I can fix them. the main cut I draw on all of my other cuts here. Yep, so I know exactly where to cut and I just use my hard edge and clamp system to do these cuts. So to get a nice tidy shape around that edge I'm using this Saker tool. Um, I, I don't know what they're actually called. I just use it my Saker tool. It's so good and you press it all in really hard and that's going to take out that corner and have it super tidy for me. So you do it and then what you do is you flip this up so it doesn't move. See what I mean? And now I go and trace that onto my piece. So there I have all of the marks, it's a jigsaw cut, that means edge strip with birch edge, that's going to be on your handle routed, with the handle routed, all these arrows mean edge stripping, and then this little tiny route here is for, to sort of counter sink the piano hinge, I've worked out how to do that with the quarter inch router, so that's that side, which happens to be the driver's side, ready to route and edge strip. Okay, so what I'm working on today with the dinette, whilst I wait for uh, some edge stripping to come to finish these tops, what I want to start to do is cut the lip here. There's going to be a lip that goes all the way around uh, onto which, or into which in a way, the desk platform will sit and that's becomes the base of the bed <clears throat> okay so basically i want to create a strip here it's two and a half inches deep and because i want it to be on an angle as in i want the edge of the table to be an angle this has to be an angle too okay there's a whole lot of reasons for that firstly i find it aesthetically way more attractive to have what's called a bull nose on the table but that means I have to cut this edge a little bit differently so that's what I'm up to today and I'm just working out my various pieces of that puzzle okay so what I'm cutting now is the edge to go around the inner edge of the dinette uh, onto which the bed platform will 
go. And I'm doing it with a 45 degree angle. So what I've got here is I set up my jig. I'm gonna cut 45 degree angle here and then cut a straight line and then do that a few times to get these edges. That's what we're doing. a moment when I wish I had two skill saws because I'm going to have to do 45 degree, 90 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree just so I've got a hard edge and so I'm going to have to keep moving my skill saw. Yeah, that's what it is. Pretty excited because I'm just about to cut out my tabletop, which means my bed. It's like a big benchmark, this one, pardon the pun. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And there it is, the table and the bed, main bed platform. After a lot of recutting and sorting things out, this is the nice edge. Of course, all that crack's gonna get taken off, but it sits beautifully in its little V here. It'll look better when I <laughs> when I finish it up. But I'm very excited about getting that finish. That's fantastic for me. So now that I've cut all of the pieces for the dinette and edge stripped all the edges that need edge stripping and routed a little handhold to there with a half inch router just run through twice. Now I'm just sanding them back and getting them ready for varnishing and painting. Okay, so in between sandings I've been putting everything in position to do what I call dry fitting. I don't dry fit anything before I finish it or fix it or sand um, yeah I, ideally I should have done I thought I'd done this before this but for some reason I have made the tolerance it's a little bit too tight here and here and what that means is I'm going to take them back a quarter of an inch edge strip it again and then I'll be ready to go the other thing the reason why I'm doing this right now like this is I'm going to mark the tops so I know which way is up <laughs> which sounds silly but I need to know which way is up <laughs> and um, so that I can then start painting and varnishing it's looking pretty good and then we have everything with a bit more tolerance for lifting up and down and the top's marked with a little tab of blue tape so I know what's going to be white and what's going to be varnish. But that is the dinette tops. And now behind me I'm just setting everything up for painting and varnishing. Um, this is a design decision I guess but on the inside of all of my cabinets I am just varnishing the outer surface of the birch plywood because it's very beautiful <clears throat> but the outsides are either the blue or the white so at the moment what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do the varnishing of the inside 
and then for this particular situation the other side and the edges will be white. So I'll give this three or four coats, let it dry and then I'll tape it to do the white. Here he goes. Firstly I'm going to of course wipe them down and sand between each coat. I won't show you every single piece but basically I do a really light sand and a wipe down between each coat and it creates a really beautiful smooth surface.